The True Meaning of Husband Published on August 4, 2019, by Carl Donk After looking at the true meaning of the words, sex and family, it's now time to look at the true meaning of the word husband. And as you can no doubt see coming from miles away, the word husband doesn't mean what most people think that it means. According to Google the word husband means a married man considered in relation to his spouse. But if we look at the etymology of the word husband, we find that it originally had a completely different meaning. The word husband is a combination of two words, namely, whose and band. The word whose is an Old English word, also Old Norse whose, Old Frisian whose, Dutch whose, German house which means house, dwelling or shelter. The word band means bind, fasten, confine or chain. The word band is a variant of the Middle English word bond, which also had the meaning slave, serf, unfree, dweller. Taken together, we see that the word husband actually means fastened, confined or chained to a house, quite literally a house slave. Not coincidentally, this is exactly what happens when a man ties himself to a single woman through marriage. He becomes severely limited and confined to his household, a slave having to work hard to provide for his family. And remember, the word family means the slaves in a household. This has also been legislated in recent times by the criminal state, and in most Western societies the man literally has to work like a slave even after divorce through alimony, which is involuntary servitude. Compare this to the following. Quote, husband, from Middle English husband, housebond, from Old English husbonder or husbunder, which means male head of a household, householder, master of a house. Probably from Old Norse, husbondi, which means master of house, from whose, which means house, plus bondi, which means dweller or householder. Equivalent to house plus bond, which means serf, slave, originally, dweller. End quote. In most societies going back to very ancient times, all the way back to the Sumerians in fact, the man was considered to be the master of the house, the head of the family, or lord of the house. So it's easy to understand why the word husband, even though it literally means house slave, would also be associated with the meaning master of a house. The man is himself a slave, but within the group of slaves known as the family he is the lord or master, having authority over, and ownership of, the family. Consider that in ancient Mesopotamia, the words describing a husband meant owner of a wife. From Israel's house, reflections on the use of BYTYSIL in the Old Testament in the light of its ancient Near Eastern environment, by Daniel I. Block, page 268. Quote, in the patriarchal Mesopotamian society the father was considered to be the lord of the house. Compare the Code of Hammurabi, Annette, 171, number 129, and 173, number 161, where he is called, Biel Asatim, owner of a wife. End quote. Yes, in ancient Mesopotamia, Marriage was equivalent to slavery, as it still is today. Around 400 AD, Jerome of Stridon, a priest recognized as a saint by the Catholic Church, actually referred to marriage as the bondage of wedlock. It's also interesting to note that the word bond is said to have been derived from the Old Norse word bondi, which means farmer, tiller of soil. Quote, bond, 1300, in a state of a serf, unfree, from bond, tenant, farmer holding land under a lord in return for customary service. A married bond as head of a household. The Old English form was bonda, or bunda, which means, husbandman, householder, but the Middle English word probably is from Old Norse, bonda, a contraction of boand, boande, which means, occupier and tiller of soil, peasant, husbandman. A noun from the past participle of bua or boa, to dwell. End quote. The word bond also being associated with the meaning farmer, occupier and tiller of soil makes a lot of sense when we consider the fact that man was originally created specifically to serve the gods, 
that is, be the gods' slaves, by working on their land. Like I mentioned in my post Sexual Suppression and Repression 1, Definition and Origin. Quote, We are also told in chapter 2 of the book of Genesis that when Yahweh created humans, they did so because there was no man, Adam, to work the ground, Genesis 2 verse 5. And in Genesis 2 verse 15 we read that the Lord, Yahweh, God, Elohim, took the man, Adam, and placed him in the garden of Eden to work it and watch over it. So we see that humans were created by these gods specifically to work for them and serve them as slaves on their land. End quote. This is backed by Zakaria Sitchin in his book, The Twelfth Planet. Quote, the very terms by which the Sumerians and Akkadians called man bespoke his status and purpose. He was a Lulu, primitive, a Lulu Amalu, primitive worker, and a Wehim, labor. That man was created to be a servant of the gods, did not strike the ancient peoples as a peculiar idea at all. In biblical times, the deity was lord, sovereign, king, ruler, master. The term that is commonly translated as worship was in fact a vod work. Ancient and biblical man did not worship his god, he worked for him. No sooner had the biblical deity, like the gods in Sumerian accounts, created man, then he planted a garden and assigned man to work there. And the Lord God took the man and placed him in the garden of Eden to till it and to tend it. End quote. So the man being a husbandman, which is associated with the meaning occupier and tiller of soil, completely makes sense given this background. We also see that the word bond being associated with the meaning slave, serf, unfree, dweller and farmer, occupier and tiller of soil, completely makes sense given this background. The biblical Adam were the first husbandmen, which were men confined, banned, to their dwelling, whose, in this case the Garden of Eden, tilling the land like slaves, while simultaneously being the heads or lords of their families. The Garden of Eden was a fucking slave plantation, not paradise. Becoming or being a husband, just like having or being a part of a family, is nothing to be proud of. Not only does it mean that you yourself are a slave, but you're also an oppressor to the slaves within your household, i.e. your family. Thank you for listening. This article was originally published on Carl Donk's blog at blog.carldonk.com. Remember to visit for regular updates. You can also find this content published on archive.org and lbry.tv. Remember to save a local copy of this video and any other content that you would like to continue to have access to in the future. You never know, those goddamn motherfuckers in big tech might censor this content in the future.